but long-awaited update of probably the best open source software in the 3D community, Blender 4.2 is finally here, bringing to the table some major improvements in the 3D software, new features, user interface updates, optimization improvements, and new tools all came along with this new version of Blender. And one of the major updates in Blender 4.2 is a new version of the built-in real-time renderer EV 2.0 or EV Next, which we'll talk about more in depth later in the video, and which received some cool and amazing updates and new features that may not be enough to completely replace cycles, but enough to offer a quick and fairly realistic alternative when needed. Another important feature that we're gonna talk about is the extensions feature that is meant to more or less replace add-ons. In addition to a new tone mapper, new nodes whether in geometry nodes or in the shader editor, in addition to more stuff. Let's start with probably the most favorite update in Blender 4.2 and that is EV Next. Rendering EV was meant to be for unrealistic and simple scenes but in a short period of time. But with EV 2.0, it finally has more chances to be able to compete with cycles that can render incredibly realistic scenes, but it takes ages to do so. And what Blender 4.2 brought to EV is a new ray tracing feature, which was included recently in the engine. A feature that comes with global illumination, influencing how light behaves and bounces around in the scene in a more realistic way, which was only possible in cycles. This allowed for a better interaction with different materials like transmissive or reflective materials like glass or metallic shaded meshes. In addition to a better shadow management added to EV, especially with the new world settings where you can toggle the shadow checkbox and you can do that in the sun submenu giving the engine the ability to display shadows casted from HDRI lights. And if you don't know what HDRIs are, they are basically files allow you to use realistic lighting in your scene. Now, this new ray tracing feature is screen-based ray tracing, meaning it only works within your screen or point of view. So if it's not on your screen frame, it wouldn't work. Another great improvement for Eevee that I was delighted to hear about is the addition of the displacement map support, which was previously possible only in cycles. This actually might be a game changer because displacement maps are really heavy on computers, especially in cycles, and it takes a lot of time to render. While in EV, it does take some seconds, but hey, it's by far faster than cycles, which is great. You as a 3D artist will be charmed by this new support, allowing you for faster workflow while texturing, which is really important. Also make sure that you have displacement and bump checked before previewing the displacement. And if you can't find the bloom feature, you just keep in mind that it has been included in the glare node and you can find it in the compositor. And basically these are the main features and updates for EV 2.0. But it has of course other improvements including a better algorithm for subsurface scattering and better support for biometrics objects for more stable navigation of your scene. It does have some limitations regarding the number of light probe spheres it can support, but this doesn't seem like a big deal. And the screen space ray tracing does limit the use of EV in animation projects. Still, the improvements that were brought to EV are amazing and they can be of a huge help. When it comes to the Cycles engine, it received a lot of optimization updates, but there are two new features that must be pointed out. The first one is the new thin film feature. It kind of gives the surface layer, but we get from bubbles or oil mix with water, like the reaction that results from it. And it works in coordination with the main IOR of the principled BSDF. This feature works only with cycles and comes with its own limitation since it doesn't work when you add a metallic property, I mean a metallic property to your material. Another addition is a whole new awesome shader node, which is called the Ray Portal BSDF node. It is a simple node, but it is creating endless possibilities from portal to visual effects to create some creative perspectives and simulations like live camera projection or sword trails. It actually works like the transparent shader node, but the difference is you can change which part of the space is affected and how it affects it. This is considered a game changer and will probably give amazing effects with further experimentations. We can also talk about the new denoising technique 
that uses blue noises rather than white noises, which I think speeds up the denoising process and the GPU acceleration added to Blender default denoiser plus a better volume light sampling. Another great subject that was brought to the community with Blender 4.2 is the extensions feature that is eventually meant to replace add-ons in the future, which personally I don't really like. At least it doesn't sound good. One of the first things that you're asked to do opening a new version of Blender is giving it access to the network and this gives you the ability to install the different extensions and there is also a feature of regrouping the add-ons and themes which Blender has to offer on their new extensions website. This will also allow you to update your add-ons directly from the Blender's interface. However, most of the pre-installed add-ons have been sadly removed with the arrival of extensions like the Loop Tools add-on or the famous Ant Landscapes add-on, so you will have to reinstall them again. A nice and cool addition for the extension feature is that you can now install your actions from the Blender extensions official website by dragging them from the browser and directly dropping them inside Blender. Of course, it is still possible to install add-ons, but you will have to do one extra step since the installation button has been completely removed from the add-ons and it has been included in the little menu right here. You can also include some custom repositories to install by adding them in the extensions menu. And most of the Blender community wasn't pleased with this change, but I guess it offers a nice advantage regarding the different themes and the easy updates. When it comes to modeling, the Auto Smooth option is back. It basically adds a Smooth by Angle modifier. And talking about modifiers, you can access them, copy them, and clear them from the object menu and pin them in the modifiers menu, along with the constraint submenu also in the object menu. Moreover, there are new rotation increments that you can customize and a new name for the absolute snap grid option called now just grid in the snap to options and guys listen to this the import image as plane is finally an inbuilt feature now so there is no need to add an add-on anymore also sculpting had its tool set updated with new tools or i would rather say sub tools based on the already existing tools to trim hide mask and face set in addition to many others and for the uv editor it's finally possible to vertex and edge slide by double tapping g in addition to the possibility of face snap which is really interesting and when it comes to geometry nodes in this release geometry nodes have been upgraded with a new socket type for matrices making the transformations easier with nodes and paving the way for more advanced custom geometry operations. This update includes several new nodes and their integration with existing ones. Moreover, you can now integrate viewport and mouse position data into the node tree. And with the addition of the new wait for click feature, you will gain more precise control. Also, some new export options have been added in Blender 4.2. And on top of that, you can now define the different formats that you want to export I mean your different collections and export them all in different file formats at once by one simple click or export them individually from the file menu, which I think simplifies the repeatedly exporting assets of different purposes like game assets for example. Other improvements can be noticeable like some new features such as the generated keys that help distinguish the ones added by add-ons or some customization of rigs and bones, plus some fixes here and there regarding the animation and rigging part. There is also a new concise interface with new fonts, spacing and improved dialogues with some new options that we can cite like opening file locations in the file menu. The compositor also received some new updates regarding some algorithms when managing the nodes and it can at last be GPU accelerated, which means you can take advantage of your GPU. In addition to all these updates and new features, there were of course some bug fixes and some previous features that were even more optimized. Also, I invite you guys to check out the LTS release, I mean the release notes, and you will find the link down in the description down below. In addition, Blender 4.3 Alpha is also available on the builds page if you want to check it out, and hopefully links will be in the description down below. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative, if you did, please give it a thumbs up, also please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos of news like this, thank you very much for watching and I will see you.
en The Next One.